Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Everybody wonders when the next recession is going to come. Well, I can give you the best indicator of a recession, and it is triggering right now. That will be the first thing. The second thing I want to look at is Russia stepping in. The markets are reopening. What has happened? I will give you the details you need to know. The third thing is no more coffee. Well, I'm going to show you what's been happening recently to coffee, and I know many coffee drinkers out there are not going to like it. The last thing I want to talk about is simply a little funny joke, and we'll call it the most expensive dinner. All of that and more. Here we have the number one best recession indicator by far. This is the yield curve inversion specifically with a 2 and 10 year. Now, what does this mean? I talk about it a thousand times, but since I'm putting it up front here, I will just briefly explain the way I see this is that if you're going to get a bond and it's a 30 year bond, you are buying debt 30 years, okay, until it matures. You want to be able to get some return for that. Uh, you know, and then you buy a one year bond and you would get less of a return because it's a less, you know, it's less time. And of course, you would think to yourself that would make sense. 30 years would give you more. But what happens when the shorter duration bonds are making more than the longer ones? Well, you have a mixed up world, and that is the yield curve inversion. This happens every so often and just happens to be the number one best indicator of a recession. Every single time that this triggers, a recession follows. You may be asking, okay, it just happened, but we're not in a recession. Well, this is not immediate it takes 12 to 18 months historically once this happens to when the official official recession hits so you might be thinking wow that's fantastic we got another year year and a half but it hasn't happened when inflation has been official inflation has been at 7.9 percent and that means it is likely that it will be much sooner well, we only really know in the rearview mirror at what point the recession started and when it ended and all that. But if you look at the data, it shows major weakness coming through simply because we have excessive debt, we have all the money printing that came before it, and we have a tightening cycle happening into heavy inflation on top of all the supply chain things and all the money printing that's happening, we have the situation of creating a lot of uncertainties between Russia and the rest of the world, kind of putting pressure on all of this. So there could be big changes coming our way. Now, that was a lot of talk, but I needed to get into all of that. Here you can see curve inversions were more pronounced in the 1970s and early 80s. Yes, of course. That did happen. We don't know what will happen into the future, but we are now at that point, okay, of inversion, and that is what I want to stress. Now, I'm not going to cover this whole chart for you, but you can see that every Fed hiking cycle in the last 70 years ordered by length of time from the first hike to the recession, and you can just look through how long this has been. And all I wanted to note here is that it varies in time. It varies in severity, all of these different things. But the points we need to understand today are we have stock markets that have accelerated entirely from 2009 up until the present day with a couple blips in between, but it has been the longest bull market in the history of the world, okay? You are also noting that we have more debt, more margin, more... Uh, just in every category, we have gone beyond what we have ever seen before, too many degrees. And then you have to understand that we are experiencing extremely high levels of inflation in many ways. And when they told us it was transitory, that turned out to not be accurate. We'll say that to say, to say the least. Anyway, back on track. So what we're seeing right now, I think, is going to be, let's say, an anomaly in the history books. I'll leave it at that. 
Now, you know what was going on with nickel. The price started accelerating so rapidly that they had to shut it down. Trading needed to be shut down on nickel. Nickel Tycoon covered part of a big short position this week. So apparently there's a lot of insider, you know, deals going on with this particular individual. And now he's starting to revert back on some of that short. So he had a major short position and the price, of course, was going up considerably. This guy's getting punished on the way down and they halt trading entirely. Now he's trying to unwind that after saying apparently he wouldn't. I think it's interesting to say the least. If you want to know more details, link in the description. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of update on that, okay? Prices have soared again after touching a low on Tuesday. So we're watching extreme volatility, to say the least. And it's coming for different reasons. One point that we need to highlight right here, and I need to stress this, is that there has never been a soft landing. Yeah, you could argue in the 90s it was kind of a soft landing, but... It was one problem after another. It just didn't necessarily happen, let's say, in the U.S. But towards the end, we did have LTCM. So there, there is a big issue there. Asian crisis, Russian crisis. I mean, what happened with, you know, uh, Mexico in, what was it, 94? I mean, there's so many different events that happened. Today, though, we're all in sync. No matter where you live, it's basically everybody in sync. Everybody's in too much debt. Real estate prices have accelerated. Stock prices have accelerated. I mean, you, you see the similarities happening. Okay, and, and you know, you, you see this every single time they hike. A crisis follows. There just aren't any examples of that. Like, you tell me. You tell me what you think. Russian government intervention to prop up the stock market helped prevent a renewed sell-off in shares on the first day of trading following a record month-long shutdown of the equity market. So, you know, they did a limited opening. It was only the top companies, the most liquid companies that opened up. They're suggesting here that the government intervened. This wouldn't be anything surprising. You know that there is the... Um, President's working, President's working Group on Financial Markets, I think I said that correctly, uh, and also known as the PPT, the Plunge Protection Team in the United States. China has their own. Uh, they use subsidiary corporations to basically go in and buy up what they need. The Bank of Japan just buys it all. I mean, they make it very clear. So, like I said, it wouldn't be unprecedented. But at the same time, you look at what's happening with the ruble, like, I think it was in here. Look at this. That's the stock market, by the way. Biggest plunge since 1998. Um, looking at this, I thought I had seen it in here. It was one of them. The ruble had been punished severely, um, and it has come up quite a bit since then. U.S. goods risk being late as China's lockdowns worsen shipping port jams. My goodness. We, <laughs> this is the last thing. We need yet another slowdown, yet another crisis, yet more on top of more on top of more. And yet here we are. So because there was closures, because there's, you know, lockdowns, this and that, it puts additional pressure. Here we are again. I just wanted to make that clear. Coffee. How many people love there? Love their espresso. Hit that thumbs up button if you love the espresso. And if you don't love the espresso... We can't be friends. I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. I love a good mint tea. Mint tea, gotta, gotta say, it's pretty good. Coffee farmers face mega emergency. Now, I love to use the word mega, but here is Bloomberg quoting the word mega emergency as fertilizer costs soar, yields at risk as growers consider nutrient saving measures. They're talking about Nicaragua, talking about Guatemala, Costa Rica, and so on. This, in my opinion, is a big concern. Why? Because as the prices of these things go up, individuals start to say, well, I'm not going to give up my coffee. I'm still going to buy my coffee. It's, you know, an additional 30 cents, let's say. 
Okay, 30 cents, no big deal. But if that's, let's say, twice a day, people are buying their coffee, or even at, you know, whether it's at home or whether it's at Starbucks or whatever, another 30 cents, another 60 cents every single day, five days a week, maybe seven days a week. That money there was money that was going to go into the stock market, going to go to the restaurants, going to go to watch whatever movie is out there. And that ultimately drags down the economy, higher prices. And it could be for different reasons. You know, I could tell you the reason today, and it might be a different reason next week, but the prices are rising, and that's really all that matters. China faces the worst crop conditions ever. Ever. The country's agricultural minister said last year, record-breaking floods have created big difficulties with food production. They cover some of the details in here, but you know that when you have 1.4 billion people, and if they can't get their food, they need to, st within their own country, which of course they don't produce everything, they need to start going outward. Okay, and where do they get it from? Well, they get a lot of soy from the United States. They get a lot of soy from Brazil. And they go out to different places. Ukraine, one of those places. Okay, um, I think it's a really big concern. And I can't, you know, there's not enough words or the correct words that I can use to stress how serious this is. The stock market, let's face it, the stock market's not going to price any of that in. You could see over the last several days the way the stock market is behaving. They're basically saying, hey, nukes aren't going to fly in Russia, Ukraine, or at least haven't yet. We're buying the dip. And that's what's been happening. A lot of that initially was uh, you know, short covering, and there's all the different reasons. Uh, but now it's a lot of buying the dip action. You see that both with the retail traders and um, you know, investment companies as well. But, you know, individuals can be hurt so badly by this, by the food shortages, by the crop failures, and so on. Many farming experts and technicians told us that crop conditions this year could be the worst in history. Like, wow. Unbelievable. That's why I tell people all the time, Get your food situation in order. Buy some storable food. Have it for yourself. Look, let, look down below. Do you see any any links? Do you see any promotions for that? I'm telling you, as a person, just to have that stuff. A hundred years ago, it was normal to have some stuff in your cold cellar. It was normal to have a garden. Today, it's not. Black Rock's Larry Fink, who oversees $10 trillion, says Russia-Ukraine is ending globalization, okay? You know, I could see the benefit of globalization, okay? But I also see the downside to it. And we clearly see that right now. We saw it with the tariff war, with, um, with China, the U.S. I mean, it's just one thing after another. This I found interesting. I wanted to show you the top 10 counties in percentage of population decline. Look at that. New York County, San Francisco County, Williams County in North Dakota. I mean, you go down the list and you see that. And a lot of the time, it's high prices. High prices just simply pushing people out. But there's also opportunity elsewhere. So maybe somebody says, hey, you know, I'm just getting this much better job over here and I'm going. So, you know, it's it's both there's both sides of that equation. You stayed until the end, a little bit of humor. The caption says she wanted to have dinner somewhere very 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 expensive. And there they are in front of the gas station eating dinner because you know right now what people are paying for gas and it is crazy to say the least. Everything has gone up. And that's unbelievable. One of the other things that can go up is the thumbs up. If you want to support this channel, you can do that. Hit the thumbs up button. I want to thank you for doing so. A lot was covered here. That information I covered at the beginning being the most central. Watch it very carefully. Okay, I'm off. Take care. I'll see you on the next one.